Hello, and welcome to this first public presentation of my new game that doesn't have a name. So I have a small mission for you if you're watching the video. Please, if you come up with any cool name for the game, please let me know because I suck at names. Anyway, so yeah, I want to show you the game today. So let's just jump into it because there's a lot to cover. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so very, very briefly, the story about the game. Um, this game is set in the same universe as Dimension Drifter. So it's basically like a parallel dimension future-esque world. And you live in a protected dome city and uh, outside there is the world of the ruins and uh, there has been a war going on of the demons against the humans for many centuries. And inside of the dome you hear news about this war every day and the news and everything that the war is going great and humanity has almost won and demons are so stupid and every day you get like these news clips of stupid demon things that demons do every day. And one day you get a letter from your uncle and your uncle tells you that pretty much the, the war has been lost and humanity is pretty much dead and uh, the demons have won and you're like, what the fuck is going on? So you grab a, a, a bunch of stuff and you head out into the ruins yourself and the first location you get to is the, the workshop of your uncle and your uncle has, uh, has to hide, go into hiding and you don't know why but that's pretty much where the story begins. You enter the workshop and that's where you land pretty much on this map. And if you know a game called Jacked Alliance 2, you pretty much know where I took the idea of this map from because every since ever since I played that game I was like, I really want to make a game based on this map uh, that they have, like this, this strategic map. So this game is a str uh, strategy game and I would like to call it a softcore strategy game because it's not like in real time and it's not uh, turn-based. Instead it has like this timer on top that you can control um, at any time. So pretty much like in The Sims or whatever where you can advance time or pause time and think about your next steps. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So let me just explain what's going on over here. So the first thing you can do in your workshop is you can train troops. And let's just press it. And at the, in this in this presentation, you only have two, but in the final game, you will have four different troops, and um, which all you have to unlock. You know, these uh, all of them will be locked basically. But for the beginning, let's just train a couple of those and a couple of those. And now let, we can advance time. In, in the background, you can see uh, the daytime uh, happening. So as your troops are getting made or trained you can see them appearing on the map over here down here you have them in your control groups or whatever you want to call it and um, now this is something that's not finished yet but in the end you would be able to press this button like manage troops and then you could add, um, change them so you can have like both of them in one team and you know all of them in one troop or you can have two of the vultures in the other troop or whatever so you can mix and match all your troop types um, at any time um, yeah another thing you can do down here is move troops so if i press that you get uh, this nice little arrow thing and you can only walk to uh, areas on the map that aren't blocked so here are buildings on this map for example so you can't go there um, and you can press it and then you can advance the path, th path so you can make pretty long paths if you have like some kind of route planned or whatever and you can also right click on any part of the path and uh, shorten the path and if you're done, you can just double click it and then they will move to that location. Um, but let me, before I do any of that, let me show you the other uh, button over here, which is where you can hire drifters. And this is pretty much the main meat of the game. So on the left, you can see your slots for your drifters. And drifters are pretty much like operatives or leaders or whatever you want to call them. And all of them have very, very different stats and abilities and they cost uh, something. So uh, some of them are pretty amazing at some things and pretty bad at some other things. But um, 
throughout the gameplay you can level them up and you can improve all of their stats so it's pretty much whatever you want them to be you can turn them to be that so for example if indigo is a great mechanic but i also want her to be very good in combat i can just level her up and give her more points in combat so uh, let's just hire a bunch of drifters over here let's take her and him and maybe her she's the diplomatics that's very good and uh, let's take him because he's a hacker right now there aren't any costs in the game um, but um, obviously when you play the game you want to make sure that you have uh, drifters that you can also pay um, because all of them will cost daily uh, coins. So these are casino coins and drifters are the only p people that require casino coins So it's pretty much a unique um, currency for them um, And yeah, that's how you pay them and if you can't pay them anymore They will leave you and then you are all by yourself Anyway, so yeah, so you can always see the stats of your drifters uh, because that's that's very important uh, for the different uh, tasks that you want to assign them. So the first thing I want to just show is moving across the map. So let's just double click on some point and then she will start moving and let her move over here and maybe he can move over here and he doesn't move yet so let's move him uh over there i don't know i don't want to show too much of the map because i think uh, you know i have some pretty cool things hidden i think but um, in the final game there will be different maps um so right now i'm only working on the first map this story mode map or whatever you want to call it and in the final game there will be uh, multiple maps um that you can select in like a skirmish mode or whatever so yeah um as you can see they are now moving across the map and the more they move, the more uh, fields or tiles, map tiles, will be uh, visible to you and they will just flip over in a nice little fashion. So, you know, it's all kind of chill. Currently there are no enemies in the game, so I can just move around freely, but this is pretty much um, not how you want to play the game when it's uh, when enemies are on the map because enemies will be roaming around the map and trying to kill your troops so you want to be careful and you know send them with the troops together so for example these vultures if i think like okay um, this guy over here is a bit uh, lonely so uh, maybe he's uh, defenseless i want to have him supported by some troops and again, you can just put them in the same troop, so they would always move around, but that's not finished right yet. Anyway, so yeah, I have a couple other things I want to show you. So this is basically how the game plays. You move your guys across the map, and for example, these reinforced frames, because it's a strategy game, obviously you can build buildings or construct buildings. Anyway, so yeah, over here you have your construct buildings menu, and um, on this, let's just make a junkyard I guess um, over here let's make a military tent and she can make a burger shop over there um, so you can see how the construction works so yeah construction is pretty simple you assign it and then they make the building when it's done you hear a little sound and then that's that so let's move him over there he can build another structure there other ones are also and then as soon as you have these structures uh, the production will start so she for example is done with her production uh, cons construction so you can she can move over there make another burger shop over here and uh, he can move as well let's go over there because i want to show you another building and he can make uh, it's it, really doesn't matter it's a demonstration anyway so yeah as you can see this is pretty much how you build uh, construct buildings uh, and then as you can see these buildings are producing resources for you and um, he can make a casino over here casinos are pretty much like the high-end buildings that you really want to protect because they're very expensive um, and they will produce casino coins for your drifters. Um, you can get all of these resources by fighting enemies, which is the main way you want to uh, um, acquire all these resources. So basically you want to make your, you want to turn your drifters into 
you want to give them your own little job. For example, um, you have her, she has very bad mechanics, so she's probably not a very good worker in any of these like uh, facilities. So you want her pretty much to be a stealth, you know, maybe a scout or something like that. So um, he's good in combat, so she, he would probably, uh, you would assign him to patrol this area, for example, uh, like this. I'm just doing this to demonstrate the pathing and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so you have your mini, mini jobs for these guys. Because also, if uh, someone is located on top of these buildings, they can work there. It's another button that's not done yet, but uh, in, the, uh, in the final game, there will be jobs where they work there. And uh, then these green bars would go down, like with any job they do, this green bar would go down, and when it's all the way down, they would eat food, which is one of your resources on the top. And uh, they would eat food, and then they would regain all the stamina. Also, when they're resting and they're hurt from combat, then the health would regenerate, and this is another resource on the top. If you have medical stuff, um, oh yeah, I didn't uh, build a science lab, did I? No. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a demonstration. What am I talking about? But just for the sake of it, let's do it. Anyway, so yeah, this is pretty much the game. You make your buildings and you want to protect them from the demons. And there will be a lot of demons, like hundreds. So um, the way the combat is designed or will be designed is a few against many situation. So you have a couple of, of, um, of guys and troops and the enemy will have like hundreds. So they throw like a lot of enemies at you and you have to kill them all and you know get experience for your troops, level them up, get more items for your drifters, um, upgrade your drifters with experience points, all kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, also you want to build your buildings you can upgrade your buildings, so your buildings get more and more valuable to you. And the highest valuable um, buildings, obviously, you want to protect with your best troops and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a nice little back and forth between making buildings, protecting your stuff, uh, running around the map, killing enemies, and also um, fulfilling objectives. So this is another point that I want to touch on. Uh, the objectives, there are pretty much three types. The first one is rescue an NPC. And the, the majority of these NPCs will be either story-based, um, which will fall flat in the skirmish mode, or it will be drifters. So um, on the screen, as you could see, there are a lot of drifters that you can already um, hire, but um, there are a lot of them that are locked currently. And uh, every time you rescue one of these random NPCs, one of these drifter slots will be unlocked for you to hire. Um, the second objective will be just basic item stashes that are scattered around the map and you can send some of your guys there for example um, this mechanic indigo um, for example if there is a, a hidden bunker you know it's like a map tile that has an icon on there and then it's like um, send it uh, someone there with with good mechanics and then they can breach open that bunker and find the hidden loot or whatever that's, that's stored there or maybe there is a computer lab that has been found like a hidden computer lab in the ruins and you want to send someone with hacking for example jake would be a good fit so you put jake in a group with uh, some troops that can protect him like uh, vultures or whatever but He's already good in combat, I think. Yeah, but, you know, you get the point. You can send your drifters out on the map to fulfill these little tasks and missions. And the third objective is where you can widget, you hold an area. So, for example, there have been some refugees found and you have to protect a certain area for a certain amount of time. And if you do that, then um, you get a reward for that. That's pretty much the objectives. Now, the workshop has three buttons left. So the first one, two I only already showed, like train troops and your drifters. The third button is uh, craft items. Um, all of your drifters can be equipped with uh, certain types of items, for example, weapons or armor and uh, like random trinkets. Uh, the third one and uh, the fourth one is uh, abilities. Um, your workshop has at least two abilities that I am thinking of right now. For example, the first ability is a scanner, so that you can anywhere on the map, you can just scan that area and you can see what's going on there for maybe a day or something. And the second ability will be a teleporter, like a town portal in Diablo. So you basically you press 
the ability button and then it would be a production queue like like with a with someone else this would go up and when it's done it's like all right where do you want to place your town portal or you know like dimension or gate or whatever i want to call it and that's pretty much it and then you can send troops in that gate and they will reappear on your workshop so basically a town portal anyway so yeah and the last uh, button here is um, for um, research so basically all kinds of upgrades for your for your workshop for your troops for your drifters uh, a bazillion of upgrades really really i'm thinking like many 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 upgrades so you can choose your own path of what upgrades you want to research and what kind of buildings you want to make what kind of uh, drifter items you want to equip you know you have a lot of uh, you know a lot of um, customization in your gameplay and, and how you experience the game and the final biggest objective by the way are enemy gates um, so there are spawn points on the map like all around the map there will be a lot of spawn points located and you have to close all of them and that's pretty much the main objective of the whole game and uh, as soon as you close one of these spawn points uh, all of the other spawn points will become harder so that's pretty much the main goal of the whole of the game and also enemies will run around and they will try to not only destroy your building so you have to protect them but they will also try to reopen these gateways so you also have to protect uh, the gateways from being reopened so that's a lot of uh, dynamics going on in the game i think that will be you know a lot of fun to see all these dynamics play out and like how do you how do you um, advance throughout the map what kind of gateways do you want to close because all of the others are getting stronger so maybe you want to close uh, one of the further most far most farthest away portals first or something like that i have no idea you know it's a strategy game so maybe you can come up with your own strategies and x you know be 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 completely new to me you know surprise me basically anyway so yeah that's pretty much the game um yeah, I pretty much showed everything I wanted. Um, if you have any ideas <clears throat> what you would call this game, please let me know. Um, yeah, please let me know in general what you think of this game, if you like it or not. Um, I'm very excited. I really like the game. I always wanted to have a game in this uh, style. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it, what it's called. I call it a soft core strategy game because it's not like you don't have to micro and you don't have to, you know, do all these like little detailed things, but instead you can just pause the time, think about your next move, your next strategy, and then go ahead and do that. Land your stuff, whatever. So yeah, and uh, yeah, I didn't mention that, I think the combat will be pretty much like uh, risk, uh, like in Risk, the board game, where enemies are on one tile and you are on another tile and you move to the tile where the enemies are and then a screen pops up, you see your troops on the left and the troops of the enemy of the right and then they just flash and, you know, fancy effects will happen and then they, they will pretty much shoot each other and then whoever wins, they win. You have no influence over the combat at all. It's a passive thing. So. All you want to do with the combat is plan ahead and uh, be prepared, basically. So yeah, uh, like a, in a board game, you know? Anyway, so yeah, that is pretty much it. If you like it, press the like button. I don't even know why I'm saying this. Um, please let me know in the comments what you think of the game. Um, and yeah, um, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.